Good morning and welcome to today's video of Vanguard Life. My name is Damlala Mushake and I'm with Precious Tripodi. And um, this morning on the front page of Vanguard, there's a photo story that says uh, last minute shopping. Business activities at Balogo Market in Dumota and Lagos as people make last minute shopping for Christmas and that's yesterday. I mean, have you made your last minute last shopping? Last minute shopping. I'm wondering in my head, I'm thinking, I, I thought we all agree that we don't have money. So where are these people spending this money from? It's still shocking that we say we don't have money. Hey. So how come these markets are still filled with people buying things? No matter what, this is Christmas. People are still going to bring out that money to shop. That's what you are supposed to know. So the only thing is that we should still keep asking our secret Santa to send us our money so that we can do our own uh, last minute shopping. But uh, let's go straight to the front pages of the papers and see what's uh, there and um, on the front page of Vanguard and um, you know it seems a Vanguard on the front page this morning there's a decoration of the Christmas uh, you know uh, with uh, of course the Christmas trees and some little flowers and you can know that yes it's really the Utah season but here uh, here the story says that federal government tracking new type of coronavirus in Nigeria says that Nigerians will get a uh, COVID vaccine free straight traced uh, to South Africa Again, FCT, short bars, clubs, others limit wedding guests to 50. Para imposes a partial lockdown on Dokansu's crossover service. It imposes new restrictions, bans nightclubs and vigils. Governor Abiodun suspends carnival and crossover gatherings. And you can see that story on page 8. Now the story is below on page 5. We have uh, other unions threatening uh, L as ASU and strike. We want to resume to federal government correct imbalance in end allowances, not teaching varsity staff trojans. It appears that government doesn't want peace. That's coming from SSANU. Government shield away from its responsibility, and that's coming from NAPTAN. Also, NAN's clamors for student involvement in future negotiation. Now, here at the second full two story also is of a petrol tanker traveling through Jemba. Moro local government area of Kwara State it fell and spilled its load, starting a fire that burnt down about 30 houses and shop, with about 16 persons dead in the inferno. I mean, it's a it's a very sad strategy uh, close to you know Christmas, and uh, really hope they rest in their peace. Now, um, the stories above the nameplate on page 11. We have agreed law federal government to deploy 200 security personnel to Tinkan Apapa ports. Utah federal government declares that December 25th, 28th, January 1st, public holidays. Uh, you can see that story on page 9. Also, insecurity on the government to recruit more men into Amotekon. And uh, you can see that on page 10. And lastly, on the front page on Vanguard, on page 19, we have Nigerians' bony light price that stabilizes at $50 per barrel. And that's all on the front page of Vanguard. And from there, we'll go straight to the Punch newspaper. And on the Punch newspaper, the main story says ASU may resume strike in February. Uh, Vasti unions war over 40 billion naira. The writer says federal government promises 30 billion naira for Vasti's revitalization before January, says uh, ASU. Uh, lecturers don't have monopoly of strike. We will ground universities, union says. A prevent future strike, honor agreements, parents association pleads with federal government. Uh, stories above this grown to the politicians planning smear campaigns against Buhari, says the president. You can see that on page 17. Also on page 19, low production pushes up cement prices by 35%. On page 27, federal government to deploy 200 security personnel to combat Apapa Greenlock and uh, the photo story also shows um, a scene at uh, Bolade Market which showed the Lagos uh, traders at also Ikeja bus stop and you know people buying things and I'm still wondering but we do not have money where's all these things coming from and the last thing on the front page of the punch newspaper pages four and five five arrested for killing this man this the killing dismembering Ogun housewife and motorcyclists away from the pond to take the nation newspaper. Okay, on the front page of the nation newspaper, we have varsity workers kick as ASU suspends strike. 
uh, the writer says uh, NASU, SSANU, NAT protest um, 40 billion naira and allowances uh, sharing formula. And I mean, quote here, no union, not even ASU, has the monopoly of opening or closing of schools to strike payment of end allowances should be you based on unions. Uh, you can see that story on the front page and it continues on page three. COVID-19 Ogun on those top crossover worship centers. Um, Quara imposes curfew. Nigerians won't pay to get vaccine, says PTF. Uh, you can see this story on page two and three. And lastly, on the front page of the nation, we have a border still shut to goods movements. And that's all we have on the front pages of the papers this morning. Uh, we're going on a short break, and when we come back, our guests will be joining us to analyze these stories. Stay with us, we'll be back. Today in the news, uh, we read and give in-depth analysis on some of the stories on the front pages of the paper. Also, take your insightful comments of what's going on here in Nigeria and across the world. Join us Monday through to Friday on Brandon Live. All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is today in the news of Vanguard Life. My name is Damlola Bushaki, and I'm with Precious Chukudi. And uh, we've reviewed the front pages of the papers, and now this is the analysis segment where this is uh, Fumi Komola first joining us to analyze these stories, as she is the former labor editor of Vanguard newspaper. Good morning, ma. Good morning, Merry Christmas. Yeah, so thank you. We should the same. And you know, when we were talking about what was on the front pages of the papers, uh, we talked about uh, how Nigerians are saying there's no money, but people are really going shopping and all that. And I could see your facial expression, you know, you know that smile on your face. I'd like to hear your opinion on what you know Precious was saying about people, you know, still going out to shop even though they said there's no money in Nigeria. If people will shop because this is a special Christmas. It's a Christmas in which you're saying, God, I thank you I have survived COVID-19, okay? I have survived the year 2020. So it's, it's a special Christmas. However, when people say they don't have money, it doesn't mean that they don't have money at all. What it means is that the, the purchasing power it's not enough to meet their needs. In other words, they're complaining about the level of inflation and the purchasing power. So people are going to buy, people are going to shop, people are going to eat specially because it is a Christmas of thank you. Mm. Yes, it's really Christmas of thank you, Lord. But uh, you know, still talking about this Christmas, you know, due to the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic now, many things have been cancelled, like uh, parties, clubbings, and uh, street carnivals, and uh, many more, including uh, vigils and crossover service. And, you know, people are really expecting that okay, this Christmas is going to be dirty, but it seems now it's not really going to be dirty. Now, what do you think about that, and how Nigerians will feel exactly about this? Well, you have a choice. I think the government is right in the first place to take steps that would keep us alive. You need to be alive to be part of Christmas of 2021. However, the choice is yours. If you decide to go out and violate COVID-19 guidelines, whatever happens, you would not say the government did not put measures in place, you will then know that it's your personal decision. I support the government that have 
cancelled 31st night ritual. Because come to look at it, that's a time that you have so many people within the church premises. No matter the amount of water, sanitation, soap, or whatever you put, sanitizer rather, it may not go round. People are going to cluster. And I think that it's in our own interest to stay home. A lot of church services are online. Many you can watch on television or on cable TV. So I think our lives are in our hands. Okay, okay that's not to say that it's only COVID-19 that kills. No. But it's, I think the government is right. People should be responsible. Take your destiny in your own hands. Okay, okay. Talking about you know COVID, let's talk about you know the uh, mutant uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, you know people are really uh, talking that you know it seems uh, you know the the, the, the disease uh, that's COVID uh, mutation. It has really been in Nigeria even before it was discovered in UK. And I uh, you know talking about this uh, this uh, type of uh, COVID. You know, many people are really talking about the disease itself that it's more dangerous and it spreads faster than all the than the other COVID nineteen. And you know, the symptoms are also different. I mean, we had someone come out on social media to say that when his brother, when her brother woke up in the morning, you know, he could not, uh, you know, really see. And when they went to the hospital, they said it would be hard for him to, you know, regain his uh, sight hundred percent. Now, seeing that this disease is really in Nigeria or might be in Nigeria, what do you think about? this because it seems everybody's not even taking caution right now and if it's in Nigeria what's really going to be the consequence of what we face here I think it does still in the realm of speculation because before you can confirm that a new variant of COVID-19 is seen in Nigeria it has to be WHO confirmed in the UK where they have it they are tr even now I, I think they are still trying to get what vaccine or whatever it is to effect cures but on the part of the federal government here the presidential task force on this COVID-19 has said that the next day is how to get the vaccines into Nigeria so that people are vaccinated both for prevention and for cure we are not until it is medically confirmed that the new variant don't don't forget that there are so many types of viruses so many some just run the their the course within the body and they disappear with a few antibiotics so we have to wait until this is medically confirmed it's not enough for one person to say, oh, I had this experience and therefore it's the new variant of COVID-19 and Nigeria is not aware. Yeah. I think that's still in the realm of speculation. We need medical confirmation of that. Okay, you talked about you know, the vaccine itself. I know we've been told that the vaccine will actually get to Nigeria you know, in January. And um, you know, it seems, uh, you know, the question that people were asking immediately they had that was that, you know, is it going to be free? Are they going to pay money? How much are they going to pay? But it seems that PTF, a national coordinator, intended that the COVID-19 uh, vaccine will be administered on Nigerians free. I mean, it's an hint, uh, it's a hint, and we don't really know yet if it's true. But as a Nigerian, if this is true, uh, what do you feel? I mean, how do you feel right now? Well, it's a two-way thing. Health is wealth. A healthy nation is a wealthy nation. If the government wants to give it free, that's fine. But again, at the same time, we also should look at the population of Nigeria. <laughs> you know what? Over 120 million, the cost. And this is happening at a time that government income has also dwindled seriously. Well, what the presidential task force spokesman has said, let us hope that it happens that way. But I foresee a situation where the government may turn around to look for X, Y, Z category of people, it is free. For A, B, B, C, D category of people, you may have to pay. Now, what they decide to ask us to pay, 
is their own decision. However, in the interest of this nation, it is better to have it free. If some people are going to pay, let it be a token. Let it be something that is very, very affordable. Because like I said earlier, earlier a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. We cannot afford to do things that we allow their bodies to be picked on our streets. We need to be alive to be productive. We need to be alive to be wealthy as a nation. So my attitude was be, let's wait until we get to that bridge or river and then we know how to cross it. All right, let's move on to ASU strike. And, um, you know, according to some sources, uh, the reason for us calling off its nine month old strike uh, was when the leadership of the union uh, realized that the poor economic situation of the country may not allow government to meet some of its demands. And this is my question. I mean, we're all well aware of uh, the economic situation of the country. So how come it's just now that uh, the leadership of the of ASU is finally deciding that okay we can see that there's some poor economic situation and they decide to you know relieve the strike. What, what do you make of this? Well, first of all, let's start from the point that it's good news that um, the strike is coming to an, uh, has come to an end. At least there's temporary relief. But I think that in the court of public opinion, ASU has lost out. And look, and a, a reason or an excuse must be given for calling off or suspending the strike. But I think the truth of the matter is that they have lost it in the court of public opinion. But they will not come out and give that as the reason why they're suspending. Like you said, maybe now they are now convinced that everybody knew all along, like you said, that uh, 2020 has not been the best year even for government income. But maybe with facts and figures now, they are now more convinced than they were earlier. So when all is good and ends well, let's see. But then the other unions in the universities are also kicking. Well, what are the issues? Is it that what has been considered to ASU will negatively affect NASU and SANU and Saturai? I don't know. So they have to tell us what the issues are. You know, it's not that we get out of one and then we get into another. They too are likely not to win in the court of public opinion. So these things have to be weighed. And I think that union leaders know this. I think that they know this. And they have to weigh their options very well. What is important is that we want our youth, we want our children back in the academic environment doing what they should be doing. All right, you, you just, uh, you know, spoke about the, you know, non-teaching staff union who are also threatening to, you know, um, you know, to resume, threatening not to resume until when the government has, you know, corrected the sharing formula of the end, you know, allowances. Now, they are accusing the government of operating a divide and rule system. Do you agree with, you know, what they are saying? It all depends on what the issues are. Why would the government divide our rules? The government has not divided their unions. They are not divided SANU, NASU, and uh, the government cannot even divide unions, except union members are willing to be divided. You know, I think what they are talking about, and this happens also in the health sector too, maybe they are feeling that ASU, some things have been considered to ASU that gives them an advantage over others. If you look at the health sector too, when the NMA goes on strike and gets his demand, then you have the nurses go on strike, then you have other medical personnel also go on strike. So I think that is what is trying to play out here. But they have to convince the government. And I think they have to go through the process of arbitration, conciliation, and all of that before they declare a strike. I expect that they will have raised their issues with the Federal Ministry of Labor and the Ministry of Education before they embark on strike. But honestly, what we want now is peace. Let everybody get back working and then the issues 
discussions can be going on. Strike is the last weapon. It is the last, it should be the last result. It shouldn't be the first one. Okay, um, um, let's talk about, uh, you know, Amotep right now. And, um, it seems that uh, the governor that um, um, wrote me Akwari Dolu of Ondo State promised uh, to employ more personnel into the security outfit codenamed Amotepo um, uh, to curb uh, insecurity in the state. And let's not forget that you know, recently some people have said that Amotepo is not really working because they feel that you know there's still um, you know, insecurity in the way they are the way they are told that they should really protect and all that so do you think employing more security personnel will help uh, you know these amotech um, people to help assist uh, you know in covering some of these security issues yes it will thumbs up for governor Kredolu. but beyond that is the fact that these people are not fully equipped okay the federal government of nigeria is not allowing them to be fully equipped i will not say that but i'm a tech has failed fully at least they require some successes in in that same of the state that i'm a tech exists does not mean that there will not be security challenges but that the government has decided to overfund those states as they have to prioritize security engaging more people and don't forget that engaging more people is means taking more people out of the unemployment market that is self is commendable however the success of Amoteco or any other security outfit is also it also depends on the equipment the weapons at their disposal don't forget that these bandits are fully out and they are not armed and that's where the problem is. All right, moving on, let's talk about uh, the Apapa gridlock. And, you know, even in these times where we're, you know, experiencing the festive period and all of that, there's still traffic in that region. And now the federal government has, you know, promised to deploy 200 uh, security personnel to clear the gridlock at the Tinkan, you know, island and Apapa area and enforce compliance on heavy duty trucks uh, not to park on the road. Now, it's, it's been a long time coming. Uh, we've heard this, you know, they were, the security personnel were there before and they moved out of the road. Uh, being someone who has experienced that Apapa traffic and all of that, uh, what exactly do you make of what the government is saying? Do you think it's something that can work or do you think there are other ways that they can actually deal with the Apapa issue? First of all, yes, I've experienced it. The other Apapa gridlock issue started more than 10 years ago. That's just the truth. Over 10 years ago. Well, it's a good idea to put security personnel on the way uh, and then make sure that the construction going on, there's, I mean, the trailers give way for construction activities to move faster so that we can have better roads. But again, putting more security men on the road, I hope they will not turn it into their gold mine. Because already people are complaining. The trailer drivers are complaining that the security men don't even bother about salary now. They, they, it's, they, it's a, a invisible toll gate. And that's where they make their money. Let's hope that they will be patriotic enough with good supervision. Because I think that they don't have enough supervision. That's why they are doing what they are doing. But the idea is not a bad idea. But let's hope that it's work. I, I cannot say emphatically that it will work because there are so many uh, variables that are at play. But if they are supervised by their superiors, if they concentrate on clearing the roads and not collecting money, maybe we will get to the end. But I tell you, it's a shame. This problem has been there for over 10 years and we are behaving as if the black man cannot just solve a simple, a simple problem. But let us be hopeful that this one will bring the solution, a smooth ride into our papa and its uh, uh, environment and the other environment as we all would like to see. 
All right, aside from the fact that the government is saying they want to deploy 200 security personnel, uh, what other ways do you think that, um, you know, we can fix this, this current, you know, problem? Because it seems to be ongoing. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned that earlier that, uh, you know, they will come back and then before, you know, they will clear the roads or they will try to take off the tankers and then, you know, people will be back to spending nine hours, ten hours on the road. Sometimes no-go area, like they would say in Nigeria parlance. What else do you think that, uh, you know, you'd suggest for the government to do? Well, it's not impossible. There's a tanker park at Orile that uh, I think is Governor Fashola now that did that, or Governor Tinubu, one of them did it at that time. There's a tanker park at Orile, and then they can get these tankers, trailers, of the let them be outside Lagos. There's another tanker park at Ogiri. You see, it's a system that should be put in place. For instance, when it's your turn to come in to load, there should be a way of saying X, Y, Z number of tankers come in, finish your loading and go. But I think the real, the core of the issue is the road network. The road network has to be put in place so that people move faster. You go in and you go out quickly and then probably we need a law a law to make it a serious offense for you to park on your tankers or trailers on those roads if there's a heavy fine i think people will stay off those roads and the rest of us will have peaceful and smooth ride okay thank you very much for joining us this morning this is fumi kamala affair from our labor editor of thank, you. thank you ma and Merry Christmas in advance. I wish you the same. What's my, what's my Christmas talking? <laughs> <laughs> okay, ma. And I will be with uh, Mrs. Fumi we call her fair, uh, from Alibo, editor of Vanguard newspaper. And she have, have uh, you know, analyzed uh, some of the stories on the front pages of papers this morning. And uh, before we go, let's look at what Mr. and Mrs. are saying. Uh, definitely. And Mr. is the first person talking to them. He says, uh, Mike is too short, is too soft. His wife withdrew two billion naira from his account without his consent. Come on, that can't happen under my nose. And uh, Mrs. replied, Which nose? Where was your nose yesterday when the pot of rice got burnt while I was in the restroom? Mm, talking about the uh, husband and wife coming for each other. <laughs> but then, what is it we mean and um, not allowing their women to have access to their money? I mean, why is it considered soft now? Because we allow this wife to withdraw two million. I don't understand, though. Eh? I'm mean, two million, right? <laughs> two million, do nah. You didn't go ask what she's using it to. And Mrs. is angry that you allowed her food to run. Because if you say not my nose, then you should be mindful of that. You know, so you should be active. I mean, it's always a Mr. and Mrs. And of course, they are still here to give us some more story. And that's. Uh, all we have for you today on today in the news uh, i mean it's christmas season christmas. Christmas. i should ask you to, yeah so it's really christmas tomorrow and so this morning when i was living and someone was like i'm not even feeling it it's like it's not christmas and i told the person but go outside when you get to the market you will know that it's christmas the thing is that uh you know like on social media when you go on social media I, i've been seeing a lot of people receiving you know christmas hampers even on the road, you see people carrying bags of rice and oil up and down, and I'm like, okay, Wait, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering that where's all this coming from. But then it's good to see that you know, amidst all that we're going through, the insecurities and mm -hmm. whatnot, uh, we're still finding, you know, that you know that we're finding finding that level of happiness. Okay. Let's just have fun. It's Christmas, it's Christmas. and unfortunately, you know, I, I'm sure that Nigerians would really want to do so much this period, but you know, because of COVID nineteen, the fact that we have to, you know, focus on guidelines and protocols, I still see some people still partying. I don't understand. I saw it this morning. You know, people people went clubbing yesterday, you know. hmm. and it's so funny because we are seeing many things on social media. Even the uh, mutated uh, COVID nineteen that it's outside, we've seen the symptoms. Saying that even many things are happening, and according to you know information, it said fifty percent of infected persons don't mm -hmm. actually know that they are infected. So imagine them going clubbing and all that, and you don't know what is going on. I mean, this is Christmas. Next year is coming, and just how many days time, and everybody wants to see New Year's. Mm -hmm. I don't know Nigerians. Eh? That's why you say that Nigerians really don't. Hear. You know, some people have that mentality of you only live once, and uh, you know, problem no they finish. Enjoy your life. Well, 
you need to take cognizance of yeah. the COVID-19 that is really important, especially because we do not know uh, what this new variant of COVID-19 will lead to. So it's better to just, you know, protect us. Like they say, the devil you know is better than the angel you know. No, no, no. I think it's better. So follow the COVID-19 guidelines. Make sure you use your face mask. I think there, there was a time we were talking about, you know, people being arrested and paraded, you know, mm, the police yeah. station. So it's really serious. People are, you know, officers are trying to implement it so that you can save yourself and also save people around you. Man, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Hi, Precious, uh, Dozy, uh, Joel, Loco. The entire uh, team. The entire team. We are all telling you Happy uh, Christmas, a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year in advance. And uh, today, on today, the news is by from me, Daniel Bushaki, and also from my co host, Precious Chukudi. Thank you for watching and have a fabulous Christmas day. Face total shutdown nationwide. See page five. Chief overwhelmed by security challenges. Oh, oh. <laughs> Um, hello and welcome to Today in the News on Bangalore. Here on Today in the News, uh, we read and give in-depth analysis on some of the stories on the front pages of the paper. Also take your insightful comments of what's going on here in Nigeria and across the world. Join us Mondays through to Friday on Bangalore.